Sim Formula Europe 2021 qualification quarterfinals are brought to you by our sponsors that you can see on screen. SimLab, R Factor 2, Master Your Esports, Hoisingveld, Interclassics Maastricht, L1, SimTag, GM, Leaf Printers, Acto Racer, and Maastricht, Fox AV, and of course, the Interclassics event itself. Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome to you all for Sim Formula Europe 2021 qualification quarterfinals. Before we get into the racing action, I want to introduce you to the Peregrine Mod Competition for Huskenveld for a livery design by the community. We've preview that on the trailer at the beginning of the show and there'll be more information about the 10 winners a little bit later on and also talking about winners one of our drivers has won a fantastic cooler master package let's have a quick look from andy masson of sim formula europe about that package and who's won hi my name is andy masson sim formula europe standing in front of the venue place mac maastricht Last January, we had our venue here together with Interclassics. January, we should be here again for this beautiful venue. But this year is different. The worldwide situation is different. So of course, we are not going offline, but we are instead we're going online. Thanks to our partners and especially Studio 397. In a few moments, we go to the semi-finals, fighting for a place in the finals. 17th of January, we're going to fight and see who is the best of this first Interclassics Virtual Dutch Grand Prix. Started with the Hot Lab competition, in which the 60 fastest of this competition made a chance of winning this great Cooler Master package. Before we know who won this great package, let me say thank you for everyone who participated in this competition. Let's see who won the Cooler Master package. Here are 60 really fast drivers. One, Peter Braljak, Croatia. Congratulations, Peter, to you. Nothing left to say anymore than good luck in the semi finals and hopefully see you soon again at this beautiful venue place. very much Andy and congratulations to Peter Blyak for winning the Cooler Master package. That is brilliant news for Peter and now he needs to get his head down and concentrate. Why I hear you ask? It's because it is the quarterfinals here at the Botnia Ring Racing Circuit in Finland. Opened in 1989 and consisted of 16 corners around its 2.5 mile length. Botnia Racetrack is arguably the finest race circuit you have never heard of, and it will be seen for this quarter qualification quarter final race. It's a fast but somewhat technical racetrack. There are curbs that just love to suck the car off the racetrack, so it will be a great challenge for our 30 drivers taking part today. What we are doing is we are looking to identify the first nine finishers that will go forward to Sim Formula Europe 2021 finals day in January. At the beginning of the week, we held on Wednesday three splits for the semi-final racers. There were 20 drivers per split and the drivers had to achieve a top 10 finish in order to qualify for today's race. We had some fantastic racing at the Virginia International Raceway for those semi-final racers. And now heading into this final event before Sim Formula Europe, 2021 kicks off proper in January. We've got 30 cars. We've got the Tortoise FT60 once again, and we've got a singular race of 30 minutes at the Botnia Ring. There will be no pit stops. It is all about driving. It is all about the racing. It's all about securing that all important top nine finish to go forward to finals day alongside our reigning champion. Risto Capet. Now, my name is Paul Jeffrey. I'll be talking you through the action today. Ruben Correa Alves once again is on broadcast direction duties, so thank you to him. Martijn Hussens will be providing race control duty today, and thank you to all our drivers for participating in what should be a very exciting singular race 
to decide those top nine drivers. As you can see on the clock, we've got six minutes left of qualification before we head straight into the race. You're looking at Kevin Siggy at the moment. You'll notice the bottom of your ring for anybody who's not familiar with this track. It is a very bumpy circuit. It's a national track in Finland and produces some exceptional racing. There's great overtaking opportunities as we can see Siggy now heading down into the hairpin, which is one of those overtaking opportunities. The drivers will have to balance aggression with keeping the car out of trouble. You can see already there's 20 times on the board covered by seven and a half tenths of a second. So the field, as we saw, exactly as we saw at Virginia last time out, will be exceptionally tight between the drivers. They need to qualify well. They need to stay out of trouble. They need to re race hard and race clean. We saw many of the racers back on Wednesday decided at the very final throw of the dice so although this is a relatively long race for a formula car at 30 minutes in length it is going to be about keeping yourself in the game right to the very final moments at the moment Erhanya Joska is our provisional pole position man he's got a one minute 23.587 on the clock ahead of Yuri Kazdup Kazdup of course is one of the drivers as we see Moranovic there just losing it out of the final corner Kazdup was one of the drivers that won his split on Wednesday in split three. So it'd be good to see how he compares against some of the higher ranking drivers in this competition. And already in qualification, we can see many of the drivers throwing the car into the scene race. An incredibly fast but difficult circuit is the Botnia ring. Should be a good test of driver skill and ability here in this race. With the added pressure, of course, of this being a one and only opportunity for these drivers to qualify for Sim Formula Europe 2021 finals day. There will be no do-over. There will be no second attempt. We're not trying to score points here. It is a single race. One chance to take yourself forward and join Risto Capit in January for Sim Formula Europe finals. Now we're looking at Jan van Heide. We're moving actually to Martin Stefanko. So Stefanko, another driver that performed very, very well indeed last time out at Virginia International Raceway. So he'll be one to keep an eye on during the course of this qualifying and during the course of the race itself. It's currently three tenths of a second in arrears from the Yoski on provisional pole position. Stefanko, somebody we can expect to be in the mix for this top 10, top nine even, finishing position that is required at the close of play today when this race comes to its conclusion. Currently the tenth of a second away from pole position in the second sector. One minute six on the clock. Let's stay on board now with Stefanko as we watch how he navigates his way through these high speed and low balance corners. Some strange cambers here at Botnia Ring. You see Stefanko to apply some opposite lock. He abandons the lap. That's another one ruined with 2.53 on the clock. He's still got an opportunity to get out there and set the time. Nikola Vizneski now fastest in sector one. Fastest in sector two. Can Vizneski do enough to wrestle the provisional pole position away from Erhard Joske in the dying moments of qualification? Vizneski currently just under one tenth of a second away from that provisional pole. He's just about where he needs to be in the split. So wanting to keep the car nice and accurate. Use the maximum width of the racetrack available to avoid the bump in the middle of the final corner. Don't touch the outside curb. And Vizneski does improve, but so does Yoyoski as well. So Vizneski goes in his second position. Erhard Yoyoski extends his advantage at the front of the field. 123-524 for provisional pole position. Kevin Siggy now, fifth position, crosses the line. Fails to improve, but he's still on a push lap in the final two minutes of qualification. We've got half a second covering the top 15, ladies and gentlemen. 29 drivers are out on the circuit, all to play for. One minute and 50 seconds left on the clock. Kevin Sigan, now look how aggressive he's been with his steering wheel, trying to get the car, the nose into the corner, let the back end slide out a little bit, steer with the throttle and brake just as much as you are with the steering wheel. Stay within the track limits here, just about into the hairpin, the right-hander controls the car, the opposite one, very little gra uh, grip on the asphalt here at the Botnia Ring in Finland. It's a national circuit for the Finnish racing scene, so it's not an international great facility, something we don't see used very often, and Kevin Siggy is using every square millimetre of the racetrack to try and get around 
it is challenging little circuit be careful of that curb on the outside it will want to suck you off out of the grass Siggy now two tenths of a second away from pole position in the second sector opposite lock seesawing at the steering wheel use all the racetrack and more to try and maximize your time he's remember he's folks is sideways now like classic formula one steering with the rear of the car. Siggy wants 23, 5, 2, 4. Can he take provisional pole position? Four tenths of a second down. He remains in fifth place with his final lap left on the clock to set Mohamed Patel. Now, another driver didn't see much of in the qualification event on Wednesday. Stayed out of trouble, got a good result in P3. Mohamed Patel now driving very nicely. Indeed, keeping the car nice and stable. Running wide, avoiding the bumps into the final turn. Get a good run down the start finish straight breaks the beam with a 26 3 5 2 that's not enough to move him from fourth position but he has enough time on the clock to set another lap before the checkered flag waves and we head straight into our 30 minute race for the sim formula europe 2021 qualification quarterfinals as siggy throws the car off the track he'll not be improving from fifth position that is his day done and erhan yoyoske is our pole position man by 1.28 tenths of a second from Nikodem Vizneski in second position. And Yuri Kazdorp in P3, a further two one thousandths of a second in arrears. Mohamed Patel retains his fourth position with Kevin Siggy in P5. Peter Bailak, who won our Cooler Master Package at the beginning of this broadcast, puts himself in prime position in P6. Six. Marcel Sissik in seventh place. Daniel Kiss, P8. Janik Buck in ninth. And Mark Gassner rounding out the top ten. Three, six, three. Tenths of a second away from Yoyoski's pole position. Incredible driving once again from our racers. The field is as close as it could be. Martin Stefanko fails to improve at the end and stays in 11th. Dawid Mirazek in 12th position ahead of Michi Hoyer, who was a mover and shaker in the qualification races on Wednesday. Vlad Tokarev and Robin Panzer are 14th, 15th. Jim Parisis in 16th ahead of Jan van der Heide. P 17th. Liam Dewal is 18th. Jimmy Nasula in 19th. And Ivan Lenov rounds out the top 20, 7 tenths of a second away from that provisional pole position with a one minute. 24.247 seconds to his name. So, very tight in the top 20. The drivers need to be in the top nine, and we've only got 30 minutes to decide it. Again, your grid on screen as the drivers are heading around the circuit, getting their tyres and their brakes warmed up to prepare for what should be an intense day of racing, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for watching, for joining in, for being part of this broadcast at home. It's great to have you with us. Welcome to Sim Formula Europe 2021. If you're new to the R Factor 2 Twitch channel, it's great to have you here. Please do give us a like and a follow to never miss out on eSport racing action. We have an array of quality eSport championships here at R Factor 2, and it'll be great to have you along with us for the ride. Now we've seen the top 20 on screen. Let's have a look at the final few places that we didn't cover off earlier on, and then we'll be getting ready to go racing here at the bottom of your ring. In 21st position is Mache Milianek, ahead of Kevin Ryan in 22nd. Philip Krauss, is P23 on the grid, ahead of Danny van der Neet in 24th. Jonas Rivaio in 25th, ahead of Paul August Lanner, with Chao Piatas in 27th, and Adrian Cott in P28. On the final row of the grid, all on his own, is Ben Hitz in 29th, and last position of our 29 starters for this race here at the Botnia Ring. We've got the driver orders. We've got the drivers out on circuit. We are prepared for some exceptional racing. Before we do hit the starting grid and begin this race, a quick reminder to you all. This is the final qualification effort from our drivers for Sim Formula Europe 2021. How did we get here? We had a hot lap competition open on the competitions tab at R Factor 2, where 424 drivers look to set a time in the McLaren 
MP413 at Zandvoort. Once that qualification hot lap was over, we had three splits of racing at the Virginia International Raceway. And then we are here at Botnia Ring. The drivers are on the grid. The throttle will tentatively be pressed while the brake held firm. They're looking at the starting gantry. They're waiting to be released into this semi-final qualification race. We're about to go green, and we go green now. Erhard Yosti straight away dives to the inside to defend his pole position, which he does successfully from Viznevsky and Sigurds a yellow flag in sector one contact in the early doors of this race as the field streamed down into one of the best overtaking opportunities on the circuit. The cars are heavy, the tyres are cold, the drivers are getting into the swing of things. This is a good opportunity to move forward. Remember, we need a top nine. A top nine will take you into the final stage. We've been riding on board now with the Yoski looking back at the chasing field. That's Vizneski in second position, trying to close down that gap. In the early order of the running, Kevin Siggy moves up from P5 to P3. Yuri Kazdorp, who started on the front row of the grid, has immediately dropped to fourth position. So Kazdorp got a little bit of work to do. He's in the top nine. He's where he needs to be. But it's a danger zone in these early stages of the race. We're looking at Leonov now, looking to the outside. That will turn into the inside for the right-hander. The door very firmly closed. Leonov runs a little bit wide, tries to find some space around Stefanko ahead of him. Now we're looking at Dewell, Liam Dewell, Martin Stefanko fighting over position. Dewell trying everything he can. So it's sideways, a little bit of contact further down the field as Leonov and Kevin Ryan. Ryan on the recovery, qualified lower down the running order, trying desperately to make his way through the order, make contact with Leonov. Both cars managed to survive that instant. Very dangerous manoeuvres in the early stages of this race. Somebody that does not need to worry about that is Erhan Yoyoski leading the race from pole position. He's now gapped just over half a second from Wisniewski behind him. There's no DRS, there's no curves, there are no gimmicks in these cars. There's a go pedal, a stop pedal, a steering wheel and some wheels, and away we go. And Erhan Yoyoski doing his very best. Now, let's ride on board with Kevin Ryan at race start in fifth in position four wide coming into T1 a little bit of a lock break couple of cars spinning off there but he comes like left and right Ryan gets shuffled from both sides it's like a touring car race further down the running order but Kevin Ryan everything's still just about pointing in the right direction the car goes in a straight line and Kevin Ryan lives to fight another day the upshot of that one is though Gassner has retired from the running order so Mark Gassner his sin formal Europe 2021 competition is over unfortunately for Mark Gassner and the first man that is currently not in the position to qualify remember folks it's P9 we need this time not P10 is the man that you are looking at now is Buck in 11th position he needs to open some speed in this car he needs to find a way past at least one of those cars ahead of him to take him into qualification right in now with the wall as Yoski takes the fastest lap of the race 1 minute 24.388 fastest lap of the race race leader pole position and now a one second gap in his back pocket thank you very much as we saw at Virginia International Raceway for the semi-finals it is not over till it's over although it looks comfortable for Yoski at this moment in time absolutely anything can happen as we see another yellow flag in sector two so somebody else in strife Peter Brylight now in sixth place in six behind him trying to close the door down very similar livery Tertus FT60s that these two drivers are using here in this race remember they want the position. They want to move up the running order. The further up the field you are, the safer you are. But Sig Sig in seventh place is trying his hardest to move up through the field. Now, Daniel Kiss at the front of the shot in eighth position. Dawid Rudisek in ninth, the man on the bubble, the last of the qualification spots. He'll be looking forward, but he'll be checking his mirrors as well, making sure that he's got enough of a gap to Bok, who's chasing him down with Tokarev and Perisic behind, so he doesn't fall out of this qualification spot. These early stages of the race, you'll see the drivers being a little bit more measured in their approach. 
being a little bit calmer behind the wheel, just working out what they want to do in the race where they're respectively stronger and weaker than their rivals. That will turn to desperation as the race progresses. We've got Jimmy Nasula now sideways through the final corner, doing his very best rally cross impression, but keeps the car, car broadly pointing in the right direction. A light Philip Kraus will get swallowed up on that curb that we spoke about earlier, the curb of death. Very much a unique part of the Botnia Ring racetrack in real and virtual worlds. Curbs are not your friend. You have to be careful in a car like this one. And that was the price to be paid. And another position for the driver as we run now to P12 and P13. Martin Stefanko, a driver we spoke about earlier in the broadcast, qualified 11th on the grid. A very talented driver, very fast driver as well. Somebody I would very much expect to be in the fight for the qualification position for the top nine. He's got a lot of work ahead of him so far in the next 24 and a half minutes, 13th place. The beauty of this one is though, he can see the field. He can see what he needs to achieve in front of him. But as Murray Walker once said, catching is one thing, getting past is a very different thing indeed. And Stefanko now needs to balance aggression, needs it to balance the need to move up the running order with also staying safe, keeping out of trouble. We've got race control watching for any uh, misbehaviour from our drivers out on the circuit. So of course the race result will be provisional at the close of this race while Stewart's inquiries, if needed, are undertaking both the driving standards and also the racing within the limits of the racetrack. But Martin Stefanko not worrying about any of that at this moment in time, just desperately trying to find a way past the car ahead, desperately looking where his car is stronger, where he is faster, where he's more confident than his rival. He's got the slipstream on some big straights here to good effect as well as a very nice artistic shot. One of the drivers running very, very wide. That's the incident we saw earlier to see get caught on that curve. It sucks the car out off the racetrack and did very well actually to keep pointing broadly in the right direction and remains in the race. Van der Heide and Gassner are out of the event once again. Just to remind you all, they are DNF, did not finish. So they'll not be progressing any further in this competition. But Yuri Kazdup, now remember, Kazdup was on the front row of the grid for qualification, made a bad start, dropped down to P4, and now he's on the attack once again. Kevin Sigge just ahead of him in the sister tortoise FT60. The open setups in these cars, but they are identical spec chassis and engine, so it is all down to your setup, down to your driver as well. And Kasdor starting to get a bit of a march on. He fancies that third position. He fancies relieving Kevin Sigge of a podium spot and getting on up the road to his Neske and, if possible, Yoyoski further up the field as well. In this beautiful split screen look that we've got, we see the fight for third on the left-hand side of your screen. On the right-hand side of your screen, we see the man on the bubble. We see the man in the last qualification spot of the race. Eight and a half seconds in arrears to race lead, but more importantly, a little bit of a gap between Mirazek and Bok behind him. So Bok is the last person, the first person, sorry, on the racetrack that is not in a qualification position. So he'll want to make a move now. Mirazek's got an issue here. If you push, if you get closer to the car in front, your tyres will get hot. The car will start moving underneath you and potentially you'll start to slow yourself down if you're in a fight and that'll bring you in to the fight of the cars behind and then you're starting to risk your qualification spot. But with 21 and a half minutes left on the clock, you can't afford to sit around. You've got to start moving forward. So very much the man under the most pressure on this racetrack at the moment, although Yuri Kazdorp is trying every trick in the book to make the man under the most pressure, be Kevin Siggy ahead of him. Kazdorp showing a little bit more pace outright, I think, at this stage in the motor race than Kevin Siggy in front. I feel if Kazdorp can find a way past quickly over the course of the next couple of laps, he can start making inroads into the front two ahead of him. But Kazdorp is an experienced, intelligent racer. He'll be aware that one mistake at this stage in the race could push him out of the qualification spaces. So, again, the balancing act of do you fight or do you bank? 
what you've got in your pocket at this moment in time. Yuri Kazdo may be thinking about that, or he may be thinking about trying to find a way past. We've got another 20 and a half minutes for that to shake out over the course of the race. I feel this is going to be one to keep an eye on as it progresses. Kevin Siggy, another exceptionally talented race driver in our factor two. Doesn't make a mistake lightly, doesn't give and concede track position lightly to his rival. So he'll be a very tough nut to crack. And I feel there's going to be a little bit of controversy before this one's over. Look at Kazdok now, the car on its tippy toes, just checking up to not run into the back of the FT60 of carrying Siggy ahead, firmly in the slipstream now. Keeps the car nice and balanced through the left hand and trying to get the best run possible. Siggy runs a little bit wide mid-corner, brings it back down to the apex again, but that compromises him on corner exit. Yuri Kazdok now, all the signs are that he's looking to find a way past Kevin Siggy behind in front. He'll be aware that Mohamed Patel has been very, very quick in qualification. He's keeping a watching brief in fifth position and Kazdok knows to be attacking is far more desirable than to be the defending car. So Kazdok on the move and Dawid Mirzak now in ninth position has closed the gap to the cars behind him significantly since the last time we rode on board the Black Tortoise FT50. He's got a small advantage over the chasing field behind but now Borozek in ninth position looking to take all the racetrack possible to close the gap down to that PA. Borozek is in the position that we spoke about earlier. When you close down the cars in front, you're in danger of starting to be going slower than ultimately you can. So he's in the position now where he needs very, very quickly to affect an overtake, to take him away from that bubble position, to put Daniel Kiss into the man under pressure in the last qualification spot. Look behind Darwin Merizek there. He's got one, two, three, four cars all jockeying for position. They will be upon the back of that tortoise FT60 in the blink of an eye. Mirazek has to do something and do something very quickly indeed. Otherwise, he's going to find himself under increasing pressure into the final throws of the Sim Formula Europe 2021 qualification quarterfinals here at the finish Botnia Ring Circuit in R Factor 2. Once again, everybody at home, thank you for joining us on the broadcast. I hope you're enjoying this race and the Sim Formula series as well. Remember, finals day is on January the 17th, so keep a date in your diary for that. We're trying to determine which nine drivers we're taking to that final alongside our reigning champion, Risto Capit. So big things coming forward in Sim Formula Europe 2020. And big things happening on the race right now. We're looking back. Vlad Tokarev in 10th position. Jim Paris is in 11th, 12th position, sorry. Jim Paris is trying to find a way past the back of Tokarev's tortoise. FT60. We've also got Stefanko, Martin Stefanko in 13th place, watching this fight unfold, looking for an opportunity as these two cars. So now Paris is round the outside into the final corner. The corner tightens up. Car runs a little bit wide. Brilliant overtaking manoeuvre. The two cars ahead fighting with each other. And that opens the door for Martin Stefanko. Thank you very much. Walks through with a smile and a wave. And that is 11th position and a very tasty gap. Thank you very much indeed to the fighting cars behind him. Ryan as well also makes his way through the gap of the two squabbling tortoise cars. So Daniel Ryan now in 12th position, having a much better recovery after his early trials and tribulations that we saw at the beginning of the race. And here we go now on replay. So we're going to look to the outside. There's no room at the inside. We go to the outside, but the nature of the corner, the bump in the middle of the turn pushes the car on the inside wide. They make wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. That slows down on corner exit and two cars behind say thank you and good night. A very typical incident that we see here at Botnia Ring, and unfortunately being on the outside of a corner is a dangerous place to be, especially in a track so challenging as the Botnia Ring. So once again, drivers fighting tooth and nail for every bit of the racetrack. Quick check on our race lead now. Erhan Yoske is three seconds to the good from Nikita Vizneski in second place. Kevin Siggy retains the final podium spot in third place, a heartbeat ahead of Yuri Kaznob in fourth. Mohamed Patel and Peter Breilak are fifth and sixth, with Sinsik in seventh place ahead of Kiss and Murazek currently holding 
that all important final, ninth position for the qualifiers. Here's Michi Hoyer, the driver that we saw making great inroads at the end of the qualification semis last time out. Finds his goal, oh, compromised. The car ahead, runs wide, checks up. Hoyer has to go to the grass, turns in. Wheels on the grass, never a good thing. The car spins around, but he manages to recover it to a 360 and continues on his way. Michi Hoyer having a difficult race so far down in 19th position as Yuri Kazdorp once again giving everything he's got squeezing every last ounce of performance out of that Tortoise FT16 fourth position he's still safe for the qualifying but he wants to move forward like any good racing driver does and Kazdorp fights on with Siggy again fourth and third position on the left hand side of your screen Mirasek in ninth place the final qualification slot of the competition you see on the right hand side of the screen it's yo yo between these two drivers over the course of the last 10 15 minutes or so mirrors like doesn't quite appear to have the pace to comfortably overtake the car ahead but he maintains his gap to the chasing pipe behind buck the first of those chasers in 10th position around a second to the bad of Mirazek ahead with Stefanko, Martin Stefanko was given the free gift of overtaking. It is the festive period after all, so we're giving away gifts of passes on circuit. It's lining up on 11th place ahead, a Ryan in P12. So that fight will continue all the way to the flag as we pass the halfway mark already at Sin Formula Europe 2021 qualification. Quarterfinals here from the Botnia Ring in Finland. For those of you watching at home, to remind you, this track is available and the car as well on the R Factor 2 Steam Workshop. So head over if you haven't already and download the cars and track to try for yourself. A great combination for racing, a great combination for driving thrills, as is the case with R Factor 2 in many different combos of content that we have in the sim. So you too could be a part of this competition or similar in future. And talking about future competitions in the next few days we see an overtake now that's Stefanko very late on Yannick but doesn't have enough room makes contact with the rear of the car bit of a dive there bit of a throw it up the inside close your eyes and hope for the best for Martin Stefanko but he's paying the price for that one now he's lost one position he's about to lose two positions possibly down into 13th place Paris is now on the inside dangerous place to be we've seen it already the car will wash to the outside of the circuit but he manages to keep it on the line he desires Stefanko gives up the ghost and drops to 13th place so one half-hearted overtaking maneuver instead of moving forward he's moved backwards into 13th place let's have a look again now on board with Stefanko there is a gap but not really close enough to affect the overtake he realizes halfway through makes contact with the right rear wheel of the car ahead and the consequences we've already seen and now Stefanko down in 13th position with Tokarev for company behind as well. So Stefanko going backwards, not forwards, in the second half of this Simformal Europe 2021 qualification quarterfinal race here from Botnia Ring. Now, going back to what I was mentioning earlier on before I interrupted myself with that incident, we will be announcing our Peregrine Huskenveld Hot Lap competition in the next few days where drivers will have the opportunity to qualify via a hot lap competition to race in their own standalone Peregrine Huskenveld race as we see another overtake every time I mention this something on track happens so I'll keep saying it to keep the drama high and that is Kevin Ryan getting in strife there being overtaken by Jim Perisis ahead of him moving up in the 12th position Ryan dropping down to 12th position and Stefanko who we saw earlier on going to the outside this time he's going to cut back to the inside for the run out of the corner on Kevin Ryan not quite got enough of an overlap at this stage he'll be careful not to throw the car down the inside there's no space there for Kevin Ryan does some great defending but runs a little bit wide kicks up some dirt on corner exit that will compromise him down the straight Martin Stefanko now desperate to start making amends for his mistake earlier in the race he's 13th position he sees 12th he sees 11th position ahead of him but doesn't quite have enough space to get past Kevin Ryan but Ryan now will need to carve himself down a little bit and get back in the groove once again as we see look at that beautiful shot and Ryan sideways the rear trying to overtake the front of the car but Kevin Ryan now in 12th position and dropping further behind 
the pack ahead of him. This is all great news for Mirzek, who actually off camera has moved up to eighth position. So Daniel Kiss now is the man on the bubble in P9. Daniel Kiss is the man under pressure. Bock just a second in arrears to Kiss. So that's going to be a fight that continues through the final 10 minutes of this race. Kevin Ryan is going forwards, backwards, up, right, left and centre, doing everything on this track so far to retain his position and move forward. Martin Stefanko has been in trouble a couple of times, goes to the outside now. Again, we'll try and cut to the inside, try and get the run as Ryan sideways now, his tyres overheated, losing a little bit of grip, pushing the car harder than it is capable of being pushed on this racetrack. Stefanko to the outside, again does a switchback, goes to the inside nice and early, tries to get the maximum velocity on corner exit, firmly into the rear diffuser of Ryan ahead for the slipstream. Ryan covers the inside line, goes a little bit deep. That allows Stefanko to come back to the inside, but that becomes the outside again for the right hander. Stefanko, same tactic, onto the inside nice and early. Can't quite get a run. Good bit of defending there from Kevin Ryan. Martin Stefanko, nice and clean driving. And those positions remain at the area. Stefanko runs wide onto T1. That'll compromise his lap time as well. And here is that fight that we spoke about for eighth and ninth position. Easy overtake. In the end, for Mirazek, Daniel Kiss running wide on that curb that we spoke about at the beginning of the broadcast. That compromises his forward progression. And in the end, a very, very easy overtake for that P8 position. And Kiss now has just under one second advantage over the chasing field as Yuri Kastor. He's been lining this one up all race. He's to the right-hand side. That is the inside. In for second position. Yuri Kastor retains the inside line. Kevin Sigan realises what's happening. Concedes that position. That's a very nice pass from Yuri Kastor from third to second position. Kevin Sigan demoted to the bottom step of the podium having held P2 for the duration of this race. Kastor has shown he has the pace. Vizneski has dropped to fourth position. So something's happened further up the field. Yoski's still our race leader. Vizneski was in P2. Siggy P3. Kastor P4. But it's all changed in the final 10 minutes. Kastor moves up to second position. Siggy retains third despite losing a place on track. And an undisclosed incident has happened with Nikodem Vizneski to move from second to fourth position. Mohamed Patel again in fifth position, still keeping a watching breath, watching the drama with amusement ahead of him. Here it is with Nikita Bizneski. This moment in time, we're in second position. Gets caught out, very easy to get caught out with the right-hander on the bump. That pushes the car wide, he has to coax the car back onto the racetrack. Don't want it too greedy on the throttle, otherwise you're in risk of spinning the car around. That is a very very easy mistake to make from Nikita Vizneski. And the result is that his fourth position on the racetrack still well within the qualification places, but he'll be kicking himself for making that error. It's a bumpy circuit. It's far from a perfect race surface is the body of ring as we're looking now at Vlad Tokarev facing the wrong direction and sadly going into retirement. So Tokarev makes a mistake as well out on circuit and puts his car into retirement with just seven minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock i promise you that things would kick off at the end of this race when we started this broadcast and indeed once again they are doing just that just like a nascar race you spend the first three quarters of it positioning yourself to be in with a fight in the final quarter and that is exactly what is happening here looking back now from Tokarev that we just saw pointing the wrong direction through the ultra fast chicane heading into the right hand airpin Tokarev loses the rear of the car gathers it back together once twice three times catches the curve bottoms the car out spins like a top and that is the end of his Sim Formula Europe 2021 adventures. But fear not, I am sure we will be back again for 2022, where he can give it another try in our Factor 2. As now, Mirazek, this is the man that held ninth position for pretty much the duration of this race. He had an open door from Daniel Kiss to overtake into eighth place. And now he's starting to close down the field ahead. So Sinsik. Andre Lack in seventh and six are starting to be the next targets with six minutes left on the clock. But looking back now from Mohamed Patel at those chasing cars, Patel has held fifth pretty much for the duration of the race. He gives 
all indications that he's content with his position. He's content to be well within the qualification spots. He's not going to push too hard to try and make ground on the uh, previously in trouble Nikita Vizneski that we saw ahead as uh, Sinsic now that we're looking at. Marcel Sinsic in seventh position. Peter Greilach ahead, the guy that won the Cooler Master Package as announced by Andy from Symphoma Europe at the start of the show. So great opportunity for him to take home some awesome prizes and also qualify for the race on the 17th of December as well. As we see it popping up at the top of your screen, Leonov getting a penalty on track as well. So Leonov taking a penalty to outside of the top band runners. So he's not going to materially affect the qualification positions in this race. We're down, believe it or not, folks, to the final five minutes of this Sim Formula Euro 2021 qualification quarterfinals. And here is Ivan Leonov now. We see very similar to what we saw from Vizneski. Oh, there. He runs a little bit wide. The car snatches. He has no choice but to go the wrong side of the tyre barrier. That brings him out onto the wrong part of the racetrack. What do you do with those scenarios? That is just one of those freak incidents. And unfortunately for, uh, for Vlad Tokarev, that is a tie penalty. And actually, in reality, the DNF as Martin Stefanko now once again on the forward charge, looking for Liam Dewal, trying to find his way past. On the inside, key the car nice and tight. Dewal does the cutback, tries to get a better run. Snatch of oversteer on corner exit. That doesn't give him the opportunity. Martin Stefanko now again looking to the outside. Dewal on the defensive compromise mid-corner. Stefanko had to shake up a little bit on the throttle for fear of running into the back of Liam Dewal. We've not seen much of Liam so far in this race, but he's making up for it with a plan now in this fight with Martin Stefanko. 14th and 15th, they're racing for nothing but pride, nothing but racing eSport pleasure at this moment in time, and they're putting on a great show for us at the Con Box and for you at home watching the broadcast, as well as Daniel Kiss that we're looking at now ahead of Yannick Bock. So Daniel Kiss ran eighth in the early stages of this race, well within the qualification positions, made a mistake, opened the door to his rivals, dropped down a ninth, which is, remember everybody at home, that is the spot, that is the bump spot, that is the last place that you can finish in order to qualify for the January 17th finals, and Daniel Kiss is starting to come under pressure from Yannick Bock. Yannick Bock in place, not going to qualify for P10, a good result overall, but not enough to take you through the Sim Formula Europe final with a chance to win a share of the 13 and a half thousand euro prize pool on offer for Sim Formula Europe 2021. So it's a big one. The receipt in prison is now making contact with the side of the car, throws the car down the inside, makes light contact with the side of the Totus FT60 ahead. A little bit of a uh, indelicate, shall we say, overtaking move there, but the upshot is, that is 10th position. He has liberated that position 10 from Yannick Bock. This is music to the ears of Daniel Kiss ahead. He's seen those two squabbling over positions. There's only two minutes and 38 seconds left on the clock, and he's now got himself a comfortable one second cushion when looking like he was the man that did not quite have the pace to hold on to that place as Liam DeWall runs over that danger curve, loses all forward momentum, and Martin Stefanko walks through that gap and takes P14th. Michi Hoyer in 16th, just behind this lead battle alongside Robin Panzer, Leonov and Nisula, as well as we have a quick look at the replay on board with Stefanko. You can see the car ahead, a little bit late on the apex, bottoms out over the curve. That annihilates your forward progression and never an easier overtake will you see as that one there. Looking now at Ivan Leonov, 18th position ahead of Jimmy Nasula, two drivers that we've not seen a great deal of so far in this race, squabbling over that 18th position. Leonov runs wide, Nasula finds the inside line, gets the better run off of the corner, has priority down the start-finish straight. A little bit of an overlap, but not quite enough. Leonov decides he doesn't want to give up on this one. Just yet, Nasula will have the inside, but Leonov's got more down the straights and that is a position retained so set up changes there between the two cars giving uh, giving Leonov a little bit more forward momentum a little bit more horses under the hood to retain that 18th position Jimmy Nasula great bit of driving there for both of them actually to keep enough room for each other on the racetrack to 
give enough space to race side by side. And Nasula has decided he doesn't want to concede just yet. He still fancies this 18th position. We head down now into the final one minute of the race. Leonov knows what's coming. It looks a little bit defensive. Keeps the racing line. Go too tight here. That will push you wide onto the danger curve. Just touch it with the rear wheel. No worries there. But Leonov now trying everything to keep this position to keep the forward momentum over Jimmy Nassoul try and keep it nice and clean into the right hand a good exit there from Nassoul looks like he's got more downforce on the car more capable of putting the car where he needed to be they both drifting through the middle of the corner but Nassoul has got the overlap he's got the more speed coming off corner exit he goes to the outside of the chicane that is a one by one formation through the chicane nothing doing there but throws it on the inside on the final lap into the hairpin we see Leonov knows exactly what was happening gave him racing room Jimmy Minasula takes that position one lap later than the initial challenge. A great bit of driving from both of them. And look at that. That is a beautiful, stunning shot from Ruben Correa Alves in broadcast direction. Great slow mo that we see of the cars on the ragged edge. As again, another driver on the ragged edge, Daniel Kiss, under all the pressure in the world now for this P9 position. This is the last qualifi qualification spot. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Erhan Yoske serenely continues at the head of the field on the right-hand side. Daniel Kiss on the left-hand side of your screen, trying to keep it all together for one final tour of this Botnia Ring racetrack to keep that ninth position, to get the golden ticket to Sim Formula Europe 2021 finals day on the 17th of January. Every bit of work, every bit of practice, every bit of training, testing, setting your car up, tuning, every element of your competitive spirit comes down to these final few moments on the racetrack. No mistakes, no letting up of the pressure and the pace can be afforded by any of these drivers if they want to qualify for this race. Air Heidi Yoski has got things easy in the yellow tortoise FT60 at the front of the field. He's got a gap to the cars behind. He's got the speed, he's got the composure, and he's got the skill to stroke this home across the line to win the Sim Formula Europe 2021 qualification quarterfinals. Erhan Yoske is our race winner in an incredibly dominant performance at the front of the field. Yuri Kazdok crosses the line in second position ahead of Kevin Sige. Daniel Kiss just holds on at the flag for the final qualification position in ninth place ahead of Jim Paresis. And that is Sim Formula Europe 2021 qualification quarterfinals at the bottom of your ring. Another exceptional race. But look at a replay now on this final lap challenge. P9 and P10. A lot wheel from Jim there coming through the left hand. That doesn't slow him down any. Gets a good run off the corner into the slipstream of Daniel Kiss ahead. Kiss goes ultra defensive into the left hand airpin. No room to the outside. He'll swing it to the right. Swing it back again to the inside. He runs a little bit deep and doesn't have the opportunity to take the overtake. And the end result is Erhard Yoske, race winner. Yuri Kazdop in second. Kevin Sige, a fantastic third at the flag. Nikita Vesneski recovers to P4 after that early mistake. Mohamed Patel and Peter Brelak round out five, six. Marcel Sinsik in P7. Dawid Mirazek in eighth and Daniel Kiss, the last of our qualified drivers on these provisional results in P9 with Jim Parisis in 10th, rounding out the top 10 finishers of this 30-minute race at the Botnia Ring. Here in our Factor 2 for Sim Formula Europe 2021 qualification quarterfinals. Yannick Buck couldn't quite do enough in 11th place ahead of Kevin Ryan. Martin Stefanko was in plenty of drama throughout the course of the race. Finishes P13 ahead of Liam Dewal in 14th. Michi Hoyer, a disappointed 15th at the chequered flag just ahead of Robin Panzer P16. Jimmy Nasula and Ivan Leonov had a great fight that we saw at the end of the race for 17th and 18th. Went the way of Nasula at the chequered flag. Adrian Cott, P19 and Maciek Milnek in 20th place. In 21st position, Jonas Rubio. In 22nd is Fad Tokarev, uh, even Ben Hitch, Paul August Lara, Philip Kraus, Danny van der Neet, Chao Pietas, Jan van der Heide, and Mark Gaster are our retired drivers. So, uh, what 
an incredible way to end the qualification for Sim Formula Europe 2021. But we're not done there yet. Next up is finals day on January the 17th. So stay tuned for how you can get on board and watch the finals for Sim Formula Europe. And also stay tuned to R Factor 2 and Studio 397 social media for news about the Huskenveld Peregrine Hot Lap competition, where you will have a chance to qualify and race for a prize of a Huskenveld Sim Pedal Sprint 3 pedal set. More details will be announced about that in the very near future. But all it is left from me is to say thank you very much to Ruben Correa Alves on the broadcast cams, for Martijn Huysens and Jimmy Allison for race direction, for Interclassics, Sim Formula Europe and Studio 397 for making this possible, and for our sponsors, Huysingveld, SimLab, SimTag, Acto Racer, Leaf Printers, L1, Fox, AV, and everybody else for making fantastic competition that I thoroughly enjoy being a part of and I will see you again next time on the 17th of January thanks for tuning in bye bye